three to four big things that I, I really see. There's a death of macro going on right now. Bonds, you know, we're screaming because bonds are at 1.6% and this is too high, right? So therefore, we're going to be bound by 2% on the upside, minus half on the downside, you know, minus 50 basis points on the downside. But there's no market. It's a cyclical trading market. The FX markets, yes, there is some movement. But generally, I think people realize that the dollar, which is the big daddy of everything, 88% of world trade, cannot be allowed to move too far up or too far down. So it's been in a range for the last five or six years, up and down. So that leaves us with very limited opportunity sets in that kind of global macro world. Credit is also pinned lower. So what's interesting, you know, well, equity markets are all-time high valuations. We can talk a bit about that later. Um, but there are some big themes out there that are super interesting. One is the massive rise of digital assets. There is a parallel financial universe being built in front of our eyes and people are slowly migrating across. People have no comprehension yet of how big this is. They're still bickering over is Bitcoin an investment vehicle without realizing the magnitude of what is actually going on. That's one. That's the biggest theme. It will remain probably the biggest theme that any of us have ever seen. Um, and I, I talk about it. It's a super massive black hole. It's making my job very difficult to even care about anything else. You know, when you know, if I look look at Bitcoin, it's up 94% year to date. Ethereum is up 140% year to date. I mean, it's left everything in the dust, it left everything in the dust last year, and it'll continue to do so. And there'll be some cycles in it, but it makes all other returns worthless in, in comparison. So that's the super powerful trend. There is a trend that will develop. I'm not bearish on the dollar. I actually think it goes higher for a bit, but I do think it's stable. I think the central banks, the, the Bank of International Settlements and others don't want the dollar to move much. Um, and in that case, a stable dollar is very good for emerging markets. There's a technological revolution going on where countries that have aging, crappy old infrastructure can walk straight into a new digital world um, and gain huge productivity without the cost of a legacy system because theirs is so out of date anyway. So that's very bullish. Countries like India, North Africa, tons of countries. Um, and so I think those assets are wildly underpriced versus developed markets. And that trend of, let's say, the US versus MSCI world is the most stretched it's been since 1954. So it's incredibly cheap. I, I, like, I like that a lot. Demographics are better. Debt profiles are better. All of the macro problems don't exist so much there. I think the, there is a secular theme to be tra uh, traded, which is the rise of green investing. I think everything from green tech to just the fact that the regulators are forcing investors into this space, forcing regulation, forcing things like um, um, the cost of carbon to increase. Um, I think that's a very powerful trend. And I think there's a lot of money to be made out of that. Um, and overall, I think there is a continued rise in the disruption of technology. It's a secular theme that I think is very, very big and investable um, and it will outperform over time, even though it's wildly overpriced right now. You know, if we're talking long term time horizons. So those are the things that that really capture my attention that I I think more I spend more time thinking about than anything else. You know, I kind of am finding it difficult to care about bonds or even currencies or most equity markets. You know, I just these are some really big, important, massive return drivers that I think most people aren't truly properly focused on yet.